Thanks a lot. Thank you. Seems like you're ready for some fun. Well, you know, they say blondes have more fun. Unfortunately, they also have more VD. Just kind of goes with the territory, you know? I'll tell you something else. Between herpes and AIDS, I don't care if I ever get laid again as long as I live. And I'm certainly not going to be humping any Haitian hemophiliac homosexual heroin addicts. I say, no thanks, I'm going to the movies. Anybody with too many H's in their resume, I pass, you know? Tell you one good thing about herpes, though. Finally, the people from Brooklyn have a disease they can mispronounce. Herpes. <laughs> That's the first one they've had like that since uh, tuberculosis. <laughs> they gave me something here to uh, bring to your attention. This is oh, I see a message from the National Pancake Institute, and it says "fuck waffles." <laughs> Something you'll want to keep in mind when you drop into Denny's a little later on this evening. <laughs> Actually, if you don't mind, I'd like to begin the show with a prayer. <laughs> well, I'm not too sure about prayer in school, but I definitely believe in prayer in comedy. Some nights, it's absolutely necessary. <laughs> and this is a little prayer that I wrote myself. I don't mean I wrote it to myself. I mean, me, myself, personally, I wrote the goddamn prayer. And it's dedicated to the separation of church and state. Our Father who art in heaven, and to the republic for which it stands, thy kingdom come, one nation, indivisible, as it is in heaven. Give us this day as we forgive those who so proudly we hail. And crown thy good into temptation, but deliver us from the twilight. Amen. Just a little way to begin. Thank you. I appreciate that. Well, thanks. I don't believe you're supposed to cheer a prayer. But we do still have time for a quick Hail Mary. Not quite that quick, sir. Those of you who are Catholic will recognize the quick Hail Mary. I'm very full of our death, amen. <laughs> Actually, there's a quicker version. Amen. <laughs> That's the one you say when you're falling from a truck. <laughs> you can get in eight or nine of them before you actually hit the pavement. <laughs> and now, God, my requests. I always save my requests for after the formal prayers, don't you? Sets them up. Please, God, let me do a good show tonight. Don't let me be an asshole. <laughs> Don't let anyone yell too late. And punish those who do. <laughs> let the audience enjoy my humor this evening, even to the point of their becoming physically incapacitated. <laughs> let me arrive safely back at my hotel room don't let me be attacked by a maniac wearing a French tickler and a space helmet. <laughs> Don't let my beard become entangled in the gears of a transcontinental bus. And don't let me be hit by a flying turd. <laughs> Help me find some shoes I really like. Help me also to find a nymphomaniac Coke connection who owns a Ferrari dealership. Don't let me catch VD from a female welder. Don't let me catch VD from a male welder. Don't let me be kicked in the face by any really big animal. Teach the dog to respect our new carpeting. Give Barry Manilow a boil on his ass. 
And if it's at all possible, God, please try to make all of our sex organs even larger than you did the first time. <laughs> well, I always like to throw in one request that everyone else can get in on, too. Like to get my prayer done early in the show, get it out of the way, you know. Like to keep my lines of communications open with the man who lives in the clouds. That's what I call him, you know. People have different names for God all around the world. They call him Allah, Jehovah, Yahweh. I call him the man who lives in the clouds. <laughs> kind of keeps him on my mental level that way. <laughs> I have a good understanding with God. I don't understand him. He doesn't understand me. <laughs> and we have a nice arrangement. I don't ask for anything I don't need. He doesn't give me anything I don't want. <laughs> And we've agreed not to let his son interfere in our relationship. You know, so often a relative can get in the way. So I say live and let live. That's my motto. Live and let live. Anyone who can't go along with that, take him outside and shoot the motherfucker. <laughs> it's a simple philosophy, but it's always worked in our family. Just had to... Uh, just go oh, that's weird. Just had that little feeling. You ever get that funny little, that kind of feeling, that vuja day? <laughs> you know, not deja vu. This is vuja day. This is the strange feeling that somehow none of this has ever happened before. <laughs> and then it's gone. By the way, this is our 200th show in a series of 114. And is dedicated to the St. Louis home for the totally fucked. <laughs> All proceeds from the show will go to help support research against the terrible affliction frothing at the crotch. <laughs> well, it was either that or inverted nipples, you know? <laughs> Let me ask you a personal question. Have you ever tried to fart and blow your nose at the same time? <laughs> You can't do them together, can you? It's like you're afraid you'll lose complete control. <laughs> and wind up cleaning far more of the house than you had intended to. <laughs> and now I wonder, ladies and gentlemen, if before we actually begin the show, if we might just have a moment of silence for the 43 retarded Bolivian senior citizens who lost their lives this morning in a roller coaster accident just outside of La Paz, Bolivia. Apparently, they all stood up on a turn <laughs> and went flying off into the cool, crisp morning La Paz air. So I thought it might be appropriate for us just to have a moment of silence, as I say, for the 43 retarded Bolivian senior citizens who went flying off the goddamn roller coaster. There's definitely no giggling during a moment of silence. I mean, even I know that, okay? I try to be, you know, cool. Because, I mean, how would you feel if you were on the other side of this thing? Suppose you were visiting Bolivia, watching a Bolivian comedian, and he said some Americans had been injured and he wanted a, a moment of silence, and you got some Bolivian next to you going, Hey! <laughs> hey, you'd be highly pissed, you know? But I do, I sympathize with you, I know, because I don't know what to do during a moment of silence either. What do you do? What do they expect of me during this moment of silence? They don't say pray, let them ask if they want that. Fuck them, I'll pray. Hey, pray! They don't say that. You go to the ballpark and all they say is... Silence, 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 silence. I don't know what to do. Sometimes I have evil thoughts. I don't know what to do. Usually I wind up counting the pimples on the neck of the man in front of me. <laughs> Looking for a white head with a hair growing through it, you know? <laughs> or else staring at the knobs on the redhead in the row right in front of me. Look at the knobs on her. What fucking knobs? Knob City USA, man. 
I'm going down to the refreshment stand and buy myself a weenie. I put it in my pants. Then I'm coming up here and at halftime, I'm pulling out the weenie. <laughs> no. Well, your imagination runs away with you. You don't know what to do. And why is it silent? This is what I want to know. Why is it a moment of silence? What's this silence? How about a moment of screaming? <laughs> These people are dead, you know. Ah! <laughs> hey, it'll sure put you in the mood for the ball game. <laughs> and why is it always the dead? What's this favoritism toward the dead? <laughs> what about the injured? You always have a lot more injured than you have dead in any decent accident. <laughs> How about a moment of muffled conversation? <laughs> For those who are treated and released. <laughs> I've always wanted to be treated and released. Usually I'm treated and detained. <laughs> but you get used to it after a while. Have you noticed that mice have no shoulders at all? <laughs> you put a necklace on a mouse, it goes right down to his waist. They think it's a belt. What do they know? They're fucking mice, you know. <laughs> do you realize when a lion escapes from a circus in Africa, nobody gives a shit? I think it's unusual that we have an animal called the fly and we don't have one called the walk. <laughs> Seems like that would have come first. Did you ever pour glue on a bird? No, of course not. There's no reason. I don't do it either. I just like to check. Have you ever owned one of those little dogs? You know, one of those overbred dogs? One of those dogs that just shakes and pisses all the time? <laughs> and you have to take him out for a pull? Come on, you. Come on, you asshole. Those little dogs, you know what they do? Just before they take a shit, they go like this. I get out of the way, you know, whoa. Get behind a tree, hold the leash. I had a little dog named Tippy, who, uh, well, it's just one of the dogs I had in my life. That's what's great about dogs. They don't live too long, and you can go and get another one. You know. <laughs> Tippy was the one dog I had who committed suicide. She did. Well, at home, we say she put herself to sleep. <laughs> But she didn't want it, and she went whoosh, right in front of a bakery truck. But that was her choice. But Tippy was great and so nice. And one time I fed Tippy Cracker Jacks, because that's what I was having. Hey, sounded like a good meal to me, you know. Cracker Jacks and tap water. She ate about a box and a half, Cracker Jack. And the next day I took her for a walk. She took a Cracker Jack. Cracker Jack was coming out of my dog. I was waiting for the surprise. <laughs> Hoping it wasn't a whistle or a bird call. There's certain basic hygiene that you simply have to follow. What wine goes with Captain Crunch? I have trouble selecting a wine in the early morning. Sometimes I just give up altogether and smoke a bong full of Fruit Loops and go on back to bed. Yeah. Smoke a bong full of Fruit Loops, go back to bed and watch the mid-morning movie. Call into work. Call into work around 11 o'clock. Tell the boss, you smoke some Fruit Loops and you're watching a movie. And you'll be in around 2 o'clock if you feel like it. That's the way you got to treat the boss. You can't take shit from a guy just because you work for him. Let him know who the real boss is. Tell him it's your job. Hey, it's my job. 
I'll do it my way. That's what they like, snappy answers. Even if you're just going in for a job interview, let them know what kind of a guy you are. Have a beer can opener and a bunch of swizzle sticks sticking out of your pocket up here. Let them know you consider partying to be sort of a career of its own. Would you like an office right near the front so you can get the fuck out at five o'clock in a big, big hurry? You know what I mean? I ain't staying around here. Tell him what's happening. Then ask him politely what his attitude is on Monday and Friday absenteeism. Tell him you don't need a two-martini lunch, but you gotta have a one-joint coffee break. Let him know you'd like to start next month, but you must be paid immediately. Then if you still don't have the job, point to the picture on his desk and say, Who's the cunt? <laughs> That'll get you right in. Probably have a nice long career with that company. Did you ever have a hatchet go right through your face? You know, I'm talking about a good shot. <laughs> right. Isn't it strange? It's the funniest feeling, because just after the hatchet goes in, before you feel any pain, you feel this blast of cool air on the middle of your brain. I love that. It feels so good, but you know, it's, that's the only way I can attain it, and so I try not to get too hung up on it. Something I think about quite often is the rain dance. Concerning primitives, American Indians, for instance, American Indians did the rain dance. Well, if they do a rain dance, wouldn't you have to do rain dance practice? first? Wouldn't that come first? Wouldn't you have to have practice? I mean, some guys would have forgotten. Some guys didn't know it. Some guys didn't pay attention last year, you know. You got to have rain dance practice. And what I'm wondering is, if you have rain dance practice, does it rain during practice? And if it doesn't, how do you know if you have it right? And if it does, why bother with the goddamn dance in the first place? Why not, you know, you need a little water? Call practice. These are the kind of things I think of when I'm home alone and the television is broken. Here's a tip for you. You know how you get rid of counterfeit money? Put it in the collection plate at church. <laughs> they give it to someone else. They don't give a shit either. Also, a good citizenship tip. How to get out of jury duty. People always are trying to get out of jury duty. And they lie. They make up stuff. I'm sick. Tell them the truth when you go down there. Go down for the interview. Tell them you'll make a terrific juror because you can spot guilty people. <laughs> Just like that. <laughs> Tell him it's all in the distance between the eyes. Have a little ruler, measure the judge. He'll like that. <laughs> the best thing about living at the water's edge, you only have assholes on three sides of you. <laughs> and if they come this way, you can hear them splash. <laughs> well, I use that word a lot. Asshole. So do lots of people, you know? Asshole. You asshole. This guy's an asshole. Are you kidding with this asshole over here? What an asshole. What do these assholes think they're doing anyway? All sorts of... It's a great external target for you. It's a great way to express yourself. This kind of asshole, that one. And I've been calling assholes a lot of years, you know. And I've noticed one thing. The amount of an asshole a person is is directly proportional to the distance they are away from you at the time you discover this flaw. <laughs> Someone on TV is really an asshole! Someone in the car is pretty much of an asshole! Someone standing right next to you online... This guy's an asshole. Isn't he? <laughs> the closer they are, the nicer they get. I'd like to do something called baseball and football, and it, uh, thank you, <laughs> that's nice. Because these two activities are so much a part of us, and yet they're so different. Baseball is pastoral, 19th century. Football is technological, 20th century. Baseball is played on a diamond in a park, the baseball park. Football is played on a gridiron in a stadium. War Memorial Stadium. In baseball, you wear a cap. 
In football, you wear a helmet. Baseball has a seventh inning stretch. Football has a two minute warning. <laughs> Baseball has no time limit. We don't know when it's going to end. We might have extra innings. Football is rigidly timed and it will end even if we have to go to sudden death. <laughs> Football is based on downs. What down is it? Baseball is based on ups. Who's up? Are you up? I'm not up. In football, you get a penalty. In baseball, you make an error. Whoops. In baseball, in the stands, there's kind of a picnic feeling, you know? Emotions may run high, but there's not that much unpleasantness. In football, in the stands, you can be sure that at least 27 times during the game you were capable of taking the life of a fellow human being. <laughs> Preferably a stranger. <laughs> and to sum this up, the objects of the game is quite different. The object of the game in football is for the quarterback, otherwise known as the field general, to be on target with his aerial assault, riddling the defense by hitting his receivers with deadly accuracy in spite of the blitz, even if he has to use the shotgun. With short bullet passes and long bombs, he marches his troops into enemy territory, balancing this aerial assault with a sustained ground attack which punches holes in the forward wall of the enemy's defensive line. In baseball, the object is to go home. I'm going home! I'm going home! Ta-da! All right, enough of that. Thank you very much. I appreciate that. Reminds me of something my grandfather used to say. He used to say, I'm going upstairs and fuck your grandmother. <laughs> well, he was an honest guy, you know. He wasn't going to lie to a little kid. Think for a moment about flamethrowers. Flamethrowers, we have them. Well, we don't have them. The army has them. That's right. The army has all the flamethrowers. I'd say we're fucked if we have to go up against the army, wouldn't you? <laughs> but just think about what it means. The fact that we have flamethrowers means that at some point, somebody said to himself, Gee, I sure would like to set those people on fire over there. And I'm just not close enough to get the job done. If only I had something that would throw the flame on them. Well, it might have ended right there, but he happened to mention it to his friend. His friend who was good with tools. And a month later, he came back, Hey, quite a concept. <laughs> and of course, the army heard about it, and they wanted to buy a few. We have some people we'd like to throw flame on. Give us about 500,000 of them, please. And paint them dark brown. Camouflage, so no one will see the flamethrower. Camouflage is strange. Have you noticed in that television film you see from Beirut, the downtown Beirut, they all have on camouflage. There ain't a tree within 25 miles of downtown Beirut. They should have storefronts and car grills on those suits. Will that make a lot more sense? Have you ever noticed when you're driving that anyone who's driving slower than you is an idiot? <laughs> and anyone driving faster than you is a maniac! You say, look at this idiot here. Would you look at this idiot just creeping along? Whoa, look at that maniac. Go! I mean, it's a wonder we ever get anywhere at all with all the idiots and maniacs there are. Because there's certainly no one driving at my speed. I don't let anybody drive at my speed, do you? Bullshit, some guy's going my speed, fuck him, I slow down. Let him get up ahead a little bit, I can keep an eye on that asshole from back here. I like to know who I'm driving near. I'll often ask for personal references at a yield sign. 
Here's a little red light story somebody told me. Guy's driving along, got someone sitting right next to him, and he goes right through a red light. Pew. Guy says, what are you doing? He said, never mind, will you? My brother drives like this. Goes a little bit further, comes to another red light. Pew. Right through it. What you doing? I told you, will you stop it? My brother drives like this. Comes to a green light, and he stops. What are you doing? Well, my brother might be coming the other way. <laughs> Yeah, that's what's called looking out for your brother. <laughs> Have you ever been driving someone else's car and they're in the car for some reason? You know what I mean? You're driving their car and they're there too. <laughs> Let's say they fell out of a window and broke both of their knees in a courtyard. <laughs> for the sake of argument, and they can't drive and you're driving their car. And you're used to your car. And your turn signal is mounted on the opposite side of the steering column from their turn signal. And you go to shift gears and you... <laughs> break off their fucking turn signal. <laughs> Holy shit, came right off, didn't it? <laughs> have to throw that mother away. <laughs> Goddamn, you'll have to get a new one of them. <laughs> shit, that broke easy, didn't it? <laughs> Some things break easy, don't they? Some things just come right off. Radio knobs in a car. God, they're fragile. Just trying to tune something in. Just trying to find something you can tolerate. Holy shit, came right off. Look at that. Throw that mother away. <laughs> Give me one out the bag. I got about 80 of them down there. Thank you, man. And you wind up listening to something just the other side of the glove compartment. Now, here's an embarrassing thing. This is really embarrassing. This will stay with you for several hundred miles. You know those things you don't shake off right away? Like when you almost got killed by the big tractor-trailer truck? <laughs> and you had to pull over for 20 minutes and not do anything but listen to your heart? <laughs> this is the same kind of thing. And this is when you do it yourself. It's so great. You ever pull up to a red light and you go a little bit too far into the intersection so you put the car in reverse and you back up just a little bit and then you forget the car is in reverse. <laughs> you are truly an accident waiting to happen. <laughs> then the light changes. <laughs> Holy shit! How did I get back here? This is where I started from. God damn, you gotta pay attention even at the red lights, don't you? I thought, sure, they were for resting. Didn't it seem that way to you? Drive a little while, rest a little while. Oh, you, know, you have a lot of fun at the red lights. Do you ever kill somebody at the red light? You can do it, they're walking right in front of you, man. Let's kill this asshole, huh? <laughs> nah, let him go. Hey, let's kill his broad. Okay, uh, nah, fuck it, let him go. Okay, let's not kill anybody today. Two people saved, man change his mind. Well, with some people, that's the only good deed they can do for you, not kill you that day. Okay, now, before we get out on the road, there's other little things to do. You wouldn't want to just be rash and rush out of the driveway. Let's check the car. That makes a lot of sense. Let's check the car first. And what do we check first? Of course, the bumper stickers. <laughs> Make sure we have enough of them, right? You wouldn't want to get out there and not have some reading material for the other drivers. <laughs> God knows what people would ever do at the stop signs if it weren't for my handy mobile library service. I have so many of these things, I have to look at them and check which ones are current. Here's one. Oh, kind of an intellectual one. It says... Honk if your horn is broken. <laughs> that ought to hold him for about a block and a half. <laughs> Here's a spiritual one. I've found him. I have Jesus in the trunk. <laughs> I've noticed people give me an awful lot of room when I have that one on. <laughs> about a mile and a half on either end of the car, you know. Now, some of these, like I said, there's so many of these stickers, they overlap and the messages get confused. Now, here's something that says, hug a flower. Have you smelled your children today? Well, 
That makes a little more sense. And something for the ecology, eye break for optical illusions. <laughs> oh, and a humorous license plate frame. We must have a humorous license plate frame. Mine says, my other car is a piece of shit too. <laughs> You know what my favorite thing is on the back of the car? It says, I'd rather be sailing. <laughs> well, I hope I'm driving a crane when I see this motherfucker some afternoon. <laughs> we'll give him his wish. <laughs> bon voyage, Dave. Well, he always loved the ocean. What's the first thing they teach you in driver education? They tell you where to put your hands on the steering wheel. They tell you to put them at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock. Bullshit, I put mine at 9.45 and 2.17. <laughs> Gives me an extra half an hour to get to work, you know? <laughs> By the way, use everything on your car, you know what I mean? It's yours, fuck it, you paid for the car. Use everything, man. Flip your sun visor, even on a cloudy day, who knows? Flip it over here, flip it up and down, flip it on the side like the French people do. Flip the other one, even if no one is there. Open the ashtray, push in the lighter, even if you don't smoke. Turn all the knobs, have a lot of fun. Put your hand out the window, tell people to stop. You have power, power, stop, hold on. Oh, stop. Oh. And then let one person go. Okay, you can go, not you, you go. Okay, hey. Fuck it, have a little fun, you paid for the car, you know what I mean? You ever been behind a guy whose turn signal has been on for 80 miles? <laughs> You say, well, maybe he's just really cautious, you know. I'm not going to pull out now. He may go at any moment. And you find out later he was going around the world to the left. You ever have somebody behind you whose brights are on? Isn't that fun? Someone behind you whose brights are on. Someone who just had his headlights aimed and wants to show you what a wonderful job the mechanic did. You know how you take care of those people, don't you? Slam on the brakes, let them plow right into you, man. Sure put some fucking lights out in a big hurry, I'll tell you that. Let him find his way home, you know what I mean? He got out, he can get home. Another kind of person you don't want to get behind is anybody... Slow. There are two classes of human beings to avoid in this category. The first one is any woman whose head you can't see in the car at all. <laughs> Any four-foot woman in a Cadillac is certain death. I pull over and take public transportation myself. I'm not fucking with a ghost car. Let someone else flag down the Flying Dutchman. It's not my job. You say, well, maybe it's just coasting. No, I see knuckles. It's definitely not a robot car. And the other type of person whom you don't want to get anywhere near, much less behind, any man over 70 wearing a hat. <laughs> Especially a checkered hat with ear laps. <laughs> in August. I mean, no kidding, it's like some of these old guys are in reverse or something. You say, I'm standing perfectly still and he's getting closer to me. Some of these old guys, I think, they're just out trying out their new wax job. Trying to see if it altered the aerodynamic coefficient of their machine. And all these old guys seem to be on the zoning board. They're always looking at the landscape. Checking every parcel of land. Trying to remember who used to live there. Now that used to be... Uh, Oh, shit, I forget now. Hey, I don't mind a little nostalgia, but do it from the side of the road, man. I'm trying to get to a party. You know, sometimes you'll see an old guy in front of you, and God bless him, but he's driving like this. 
said, well, he's not dead. He's changed lanes three times. <laughs> Maybe he's reading a map. Can you see from that angle? Is he reading a map? He's reading a fucking newspaper. <laughs> Whoa, shit, we got to get around this guy. <laughs> you know that feeling when you realize you got to get around somebody? It's not a thought. It's a feeling. You finally realize that after 30 minutes of being behind someone who isn't going anywhere, you say, we got to get around this guy. And that's exactly when you see the sign that says, next 42 miles, uphill, winding road. <laughs> say, well, we may have to die, but we're going to get around this guy. Here we go now. Here we go. Okay. Whoa, whoa, not yet. No, not yet. Whoa, whoa, whoa. whoa, not a logging truck. Definitely not a logging truck. Maybe a Volkswagen, but not a logging truck. <laughs> Here we go again. I think it's clear. Okay, here we go. Okay, okay. You're fucked. You're fucked. You're fucked. You're fucked. You're fucked. You're fucked. Oh. Always nice to have something to say to people you pass along the highway of life. Because you get pissed. And you know you get pissed out there. Even if you think you're a pretty cool customer. You know you get pissed sometimes. Don't you wish sometimes instead of having those cute little lights in the front of your car, you had 50 caliber machine guns mounted up there? I'd green this cocksucker if I had real ammunition, Mark. Or you wish you had a rented car for just half an hour. <laughs> so you could bash this asshole and pay the $50 deductible and be done with him, you know what I mean? <laughs> boom, boom, boom. Just trying to ease him up into second gear. <laughs> or best of all, you wish you had a message board that would come up out of the trunk of your car and you could type in any message you like. You drive like old people fuck. <laughs> Slow and sloppy. You ever been driving through heavy downtown kind of traffic, you know, block to block, street to street, busy area, not freeway, but street to street, people backing out at five o'clock, busy stuff. Maybe it's winter and it's dark already and it's raining a little bit. Got the window open. You can hear the rain. You can hear the traffic. People bumping into each other. Got the radio on. Got the windshield wipers going. So everything's happening at once. Radio, windshield, rain, traffic, everything going on. You're just trying to get across town and take care of something, you know. And you get over there and park the car, turn off the key and go inside, take care of the business. And you come out and you turn on the key and the goddamn radio is this loud! <laughs> Could I possibly have been listening to that? <laughs> you know, I believe someone broke into this car <laughs> and tampered with my volume control. <laughs> and that's the only thing they touched. <laughs> now, here's a little something you'll recognize. This is something you'll have to do this evening as you're getting home. Any kind of city traffic requires that you have to decide which car to get behind at the red light. <laughs> it's completely up to you. There are three lanes to choose from. You have to decide who's the really fast asshole up ahead. <laughs> You're looking for a lawbreaker if you can find one. <laughs> if you could just get behind a felon on his way home from work. No such luck. I usually wind up getting behind a broken poultry truck. <laughs> Fucking chicken sitting on an axle mocking me. <laughs> yeah, I get all fed up with that and pull out and try for the next best thing. And I get a, what's in there? Oh, hey, a Maserati. A Maserati. Wow. Oh, shit. It's a dwarf paralyzed nun. <laughs> what's this guy? This guy looks like he's in a hurry. There's no frame on his car. Find out he was asleep, the frame was stolen. <laughs> then I just sort of give up, you know, and pull out and try for the best thing, whatever I can find. I just want to go home, you know? Just trying to get home. And I get behind the worst thing of all, a Volvo station wagon. <laughs> Diesel. <laughs> Here's a safety freak who's going to save his life and give me cancer. <laughs> He has 2.6 children strapped into the point of suffocation. 
a damp canoe on the roof, and a New Zealand license plate with a little sticker that says, Save Our Volcano. Volvo, the intelligent car for ignorant people. And I begin to realize that I'm never going to get home. I just want to say have fun when you're out there driving. That's what it's all about. Like I say, you own the car and you own the highway. Have a little fun. You know what you do? Do things that people aren't expecting. That's a lot of fun. Slam on your brakes when you don't really need them. <laughs> people don't do that. People always save their brakes for slowing down. Bullshit. Try them when you're going real fast. <laughs> Put your car into an uncontrollable O-turn. Anybody can make a U-turn. Bullshit. Try for an O. Let them see your car from every possible angle. That's what people want to see is you, head on. I mean, if you're going out for a spin. Yeah. Just a couple of things to remind you before I tow this trusty little thing back to the garage. A couple of things that go without saying, that's why I'm going to say them. First of all, when you're driving, let's all keep in mind, when you're driving and you come to the scene of an accident, for God's sake, slow down and try to find out what's going on. <laughs> and if you can't see enough, ask the policeman to bring the bodies over a little closer. So would you bring them over here? My wife has never seen a man shaped in quite that manner. That's what they're here for, to protect, to serve, and to bring the bodies over a little closer to the car. And the other thing which we've all heard a million times, but it bears repeating, drinking and driving simply do not mix. So do your drinking early and get it out of the way, and then go driving. <laughs> See ya, thank you. Whoa, a little toe job. Thank you. Okay, thanks, man. Yeah, all right. Sure. I'd like to read you a list of words that's gotten a little bit longer. It's an incomplete list of impolite words. I know it's incomplete because someone always comes up after the show and says, Hey, you forgot Needle Dick, the bug fucker. <laughs> we start out lightly with heck, hell, damn, goddamn, bitch, bastard, and crud, and then we get right into crap, turd, shit, dingleberry, piss, piddle, leak, mung, cheese, laying some cable, pinching a loaf, and dropping a load. <laughs> Ass, booty, butt, hiney, tuckus, bum, buns, rump, cheeks, tits, jugs, bazooms, knockers, knobs, lungs, balloons, brown eyes, balls, nuts, onions, jewels, rock stones, ball bag, jism, cum, shoot, cream, wad, juice, pecker, tracks, pearl, necklace. <laughs> Crabs, dough, sif, clap, gleet, raincoat, scumbag, rubber, gasket, French tickler, dildo, here we go now. Fuck, screw, lay, diddle, push, plow, hump, cut, bang, poke, batter, wham, beef injection. <laughs> Vitamin F, knock up, put out, dip your wick, hide the salami. <laughs> Laying pipe, polishing your rocket. Squatting on the hog. Getting your pole varnished. A quickie, a noon, or a matinee. Pop your cookies, bust your nuts, get your rocks off, bananas and cream, piece of ass, nookie, poon tang. Here we go again now. Cunt, coos, cooch, crack, gash, notch, twat, slash, ginch, hole, hat, slitch, snatch, quim, box, snapper, beaver, tail, pussy, muff, bearded, clam. <laughs> Fur burger. <laughs> Tuna taco. <laughs> Bush hair pie, woolly booger. <laughs> Glory hole. A merkin, a mucket, button, clip, cherry, clamp, snapping, pussy, taint, boy in the boat, man in the canoe. <laughs> Mutt rag on the rag, flying the flag, riding the cotton pony. <laughs> Having the painters in. <laughs> Some of these border on poetry, I feel, you know. <laughs> hard on, rod on, bone on, boner, stiff, piss hard, wet dream, hot nuts, horny, randy, blue balls, lovers nuts, construct, queefer, pussy farts, asshole, bunghole, little brown eyeball. Bugger, brown, ream, cornhole, buttfuck, backdoor, bite the brown, sugar bowl, pie, mustard road, up the old dirt road. <laughs> Hershey Highway. <laughs> Fishing for brown trout. <laughs> Fuck.
Fudge Packer, Pound Cake, Finger Fuck, Dry Hump, Copperfield, Tit Fuck, French Fuck, One Man Band. <laughs> Hand Job, French Job, Blow Job, Head Job, Rim Job, Hum Job, Pipe Job, Suck Off, Give Head, Give Face, Gobble, Copper Stem, Copper Doodle, Go Down on Muff Dive, Mustache Ride. <laughs> Sit on my face. Yodeling in the gully. Sixty-nine. Seventy-one, which is sixty-nine with two fingers up your ass. Sixty-eight, which is you do me and I'll owe you one. Women hear that one all the time. <laughs> Golden showers around the world, daisy chain, sloppy seconds, dog style, Mongolian clusterfuck. <laughs> group grope, gang bang, circle jerk, 20 lira, well hung. Here we go again now. Dick prick, dork, dong, tongue, donnaker, dingus, wang, schlong, schwanz, putz, pork, pecker, peter, prong, tool, rod, hammer, shaft, stick, snake, knob, lop, stem, root, joint, piece, gun, meat, beef, pork, weenie, skin, flute, meat, whistle, tallywhacker. Middle leg, short arm, rod of love, Mr. Goodwrench. <laughs> Joystick, love muscle, ding dong, tube steak, pink pencil, bald headed mouse, <laughs> trouser snake, the one eyed wonder worm. Jelly roll, puddin', jerk off, jack off, whack off, pull off, beat off, fist fuck, wanking, beating your meat, flogging your dong, pounding your pud. Bleeding your weed, wringing out your rope, stroking it, giving it a tug, beating the bishop, <laughs> milking the lizard, choking the chicken, waxing the dolphin, <laughs> wrestling the eel, spank the frank, paddle the pickle, jerk the gherkin, punishing Percy in your palm, <laughs> shooting putty at the moon. Pocket pool, pimp, hooker, trick, queen, queer, punk, faggot, quiff, dyke, diesel, dyke, lezzy, bull dagger, box lunch, seafood, rough trade, eat me, fuck you up your ass, fuck off, piss off, stick it, stuff it, shove it, ram it, jam it, cram it, sit on it, get laid, get in, get off, get it on, get it up, motherfucker, cocksucker, old fart, fart face, far sniffer, cocksman, scat fan, asshole, peckerhead, scumbag, fuck up, fuck off, ball breaker, ball buster, a real pisser, cock teaser, cunt lapper, ass kisser, brown nose, shit ass, shit heel, douchebag, and mother strapalonian. Thank you all for being here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> 